it going everybody in this video I wanted to walk someone through the basic configuration of a Cisco iOS router now this is gonna be the just the initial stuff that you need to know when you first power on a router when you first pull it out of a box or off the shelf or whatever wherever it's coming from and it's either brand new or it's been was in production at one point in time is being brought into production again because of as another router crashed or whatever the case might be but the box is wiped clean it's it's effectively a new device so I'm gonna walk you through the actual steps you need to go through for what they call the initial configuration dialog normally I would never do this as a matter of fact we go ahead and pull over the command line if you look right here uh, normally where it says oh, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog and it's got yes and no in the brackets I would normally type in no and hit the enter key and then it would bypass the initial configuration dialog and then uh, drop you like this do I want to terminate auto install yes so because I plan on doing this I actually already have all the information from the CLI outputs that you need to know in order to go through this so we'll go ahead and go full screen here if you look right here where it says the initial configuration dialog this is the actual step-by-step -step walkthrough that you would actually have to go through in order to get a router to come online so the idea is you would type in yes here to the left of my cursor and then it says at any point you may enter the question mark for help I uh, use control C to abort configuration at any time and any of the default settings that the router will choose are going to be in the brackets so this is basically going to be the the command line wizard that you would use to initially configure a Cisco router now what's cool about this is if you've never configured a Cisco router I remember a long time ago I had no understanding of how to do any of this stuff so I had no choice but to follow the wizard and I didn't really really know what I was doing and I had to go look it up there was no step-by-step -step walkthrough so what you can do as you're going through this process is then you can follow the step-by-step -step setup so it says would you like to enter basic management setup the nice thing about it is it gives you a yes or a no here and you can I typed in yes or why and this is a global parameter all that simply means is it's going to take effect at the global level so the overarching configuration so you in order to uh, to configure anything on a Cisco router you need to be what they call global configuration mode so you're in global configuration mode to, to type this in so enter the host name the default will simply be router if you hit the enter key the host name of the device would be router in this case here I typed in R10 now it says the enable secret is a password used to protect access to privilege exec and configuration modes this password after entered becomes encrypted in the configuration so that simply means that when you log into the device through the uh, console line or through the VTY line and you try to elevate your privilege to privilege exec or privilege fit level 15 then you're gonna have to enter this password of Cisco well there's nothing wrong with that it definitely does work but it can be a little tricky sometimes if you don't understand the difference between the enable secret and the enable password so the difference between the enable secret and the enable password which is right down here is the enable secret is encrypted where the enable secret is not the enable secret or the enable password is a clear text password that somebody would be able to see in the running config if you were to do a show running dash config you would actually see the password present in the running configuration so if somebody was standing over your shoulder watching what you're doing or you know happened to log into the device or be looking at the configuration output they would actually see the password so the encrypted aspect of what the, the enable secret secret indicating that it's encrypted all that encryption means is that the output it comes out in a format that looks something like this we go ahead and pull up that router again if we look at CSR 10 I do a here I've got Cisco 
now I'm logged in. Let's do a show run. This enable secret, this is the enable secret right there. So that's where this comes into play. So you're seeing before and after. So we have the enable secret is all of this output right here. Now this five that sits right next to it, that's what how you would recognize that it's an enable secret because five indicates that the password of Cisco went through what they call the MD5 hashing. So an MD5 is a hashing algorithm and you would take the word Cisco or the password of Cisco you would enter it into the algorithm. You don't actually have to do anything. It does it for you when you type in the, the command of enable secret. And when you type in enable secret and you type in a clear text password like Cisco right here, the output that the MD5 hash gives you is this. That's what that that's what this is right here. Now it also says the enable password. It's a, I typed in Cisco again. It says please choose a password that is different from the enable secret. They don't want you to use the exact same password. So one thing you could do is capitalize the C in Cisco and that would change the output slightly, just enough to make it different. And uh, there you would go. And so now I've got Cisco, Cisco. So I've got Cisco here in the MD5 hash. And I've also got Cisco with a capital C as the enable password. Now, normally you would never do both. You would do one or the other. I'll show you how to go ahead and delete that here in just a minute. Now it says, the virtual terminal password is used to protect access to the router over a network interface. What that simply means is if you want to use the network to connect to the router, meaning a telnet connection, an SSH connection, or some other over the network type of connectivity, anything that you would use the IP network in order to reach the router for management purposes, then you would need to use a password to save that configuration. And that password here is Cisco as well. If we were to do a show run pipe begin line, you can see right here that we have the password of Cisco right there. And that's gonna be where you would type that password in. Now, this command that I typed in right here, the show run space pipe space b space line that's basically say i want to look at the running configuration but i don't want to look at all the running configuration i only want to look at a specific portion of the running configuration and the pipe allows me to go in and specifically determine what part or how much or what part of i want to look at so if i was to do the show run pipe question mark, it gives me a lot of options to what what I want to look at. So for example, if I wanted to look at a specific line in the configuration, I can type in, in include and then whatever the value is. So I can type in include and I can say Cisco and it's going to show me all the lines of configuration on the router that have the word Cisco in them. We see the password of Cisco, but you might not know exactly where these commands are placed. So one way you could do that is you could type in section Cisco. See, it doesn't really help you out though, right? So you'd have to know specific, depending on certain parts of the configuration, you'd have to know where to find the actual, where the placement is of this configuration. I know where it's at because I've been doing this stuff for a while. So I typed in line, it would be the same thing as me looking at the begin line. Section line, begin line, brings me to the same place. But that's okay, That's in that particular case, begin line or section line would have me, would present me the same output. Now, the next setup here, it says enter the virtual terminal password, which we have set up as password Cisco. So if I was to connect to the router over the network, say a over uh, VTY line, like the Telnet or SSH connection, then I would have to be, I would have to enter the command Cisco when it presents me with the configuration of what is your password? So it presented me, it was like, what is your password? In terms of connectivity, if I was to try to connect into it, 
it would work. I would type in the IP address and I'd be prompted with just the password access to it. Because, well, what's your password? I type in Cisco and I would be delivered to, let me go ahead and exit out of here. I would be presented with what they call user mode, which is what this is right here. This greater than sign indicates that I'm in user mode. Type in the, oh, prove. Yeah, it doesn't show me the command output anymore. Um, if I was to go to enable and I could specify what level of privilege I want to jump into. So I'm going to say 15, which would be the same thing as me typing in just enable and typing in the command. So in this case here, I have to type in the password of Cisco and I can get to log in. I'm actually going to remove that here in just a moment. But so if I was to log into the router via the VTY line, so Telnet or SSH, I would have to type in the password of Cisco and say, what's your password? I'd be able to type in Cisco and I'd be dropped into privilege mode right here. And then in order, in order to get into privilege mode, so because this is actually user mode, I can't really do much here. It'd be some basic verification type stuff. I can't actually configure anything. If I wanted to do elevate myself, I could go to privilege mode and I could do that by typing in enable or enable 15 if I was to exit out and type in enable. I can do the same thing. So it just it gets the job done the same way. So you don't have to type in the 15, you can just type in enable, hit the enter key, and or I can just do this, enable, and then Cisco, and there I am, I'm good to go. You just have to be, whatever command you're typing in has to be long enough to be unique. If it's ambiguous, meaning there's multiple options to choose from, then you have to type in more characters in that word in order to make it unique. That's all. Now, if we come down a little further, it asks me, do I want to set up an account for accessing HTTP server? So the, these routers have an HTTP server enabled on them. And if I wanted to, I could say yes. And I did, I typed in yes. So it says, what is the username? What is the password? And now I was able to go through and set up a username and password. If we do a show run, we'll be able to see that right here. The username configuration will be right here. So we have the username of admin and the privilege level of 15 and the password of Cisco. So zero is the enable password level command. So in other words, it's saved in the running config as a clear text password and everything is good to go from there. And now if I look down here a little further, the IP, the web server capability, HTTP service is enabled and ready to go. And it says IP HTTP authentication local. That means that whenever I go to authenticate to the web service, I need to use this username and password to authenticate to it. And that's how that would work. Then it asked me if I wanted to do SNMP or simple network management protocol, network management. I said, no, I will be covering that in a separate video because that, that in itself is different. So I'll sh also show you how to do the basic setup to how do you connect to it via telnet, or a router to be a telnet, uh, a router via SSH, things like that. Those are coming. And then um, it says, do you, current interface summary, uh, any interfaces listed with okay, value no, does that have a configuration value associated to it? So it says, enter the interface name used to connect to the network, uh, to the management network from the interface summary. So I basically just copy and paste gig, gigabit ethernet eight in, and then it says configure IP on this interface. I said, yes, go ahead, let's do it. So I, I hit the enter key. And then I entered the IP address of 10.255.1.65, which happens to be an open IP address on my local management network. And I gave it a slash 24 mask. So it's a class A networks is a class A network of 10.0.0.0 with 24 subnet bits, mask is slash 24. And if we scroll down here a little bit further, this is the actual script that the router is gonna go through and configure. So it's a command line wizard that's going to basically take whatever inputs you've set into it and apply it to the global config. So it went in there and it configured all of the, the details that you see listed right here. Pretty straightforward stuff. Get down here to Gigabit Ethernet 8, it says no shutdown, the IP address of 10.255.1.65/24. And it says, what do you want to do now? It says, go to the iOS, 
excuse me, go to the iOS con command prompt without uh, without saving this config, return back to the setup wizard, setup without saving this config, or to save this configuration to NVRAM and exit. I typed in two, and then it went ahead and it logged in. And then I was brought to here. So this is the actual command line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to global config by typing in config T or configuration terminal. That would work. Any variation of this, as long as it's unique, will work. I'm gonna type in do show run section and I'm gonna specify that I wanna see enable. So the do command allows me to execute a privilege level 15 command from global configuration mode. And here I have enable secret five and then the output and I have enable password Cisco. I'm actually gonna type in no here. I'm gonna remove these commands as, as so because I don't actually want the username and password set up or a enable password set up. I'm also going to go in here and delete the username and password configuration. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And there's the reason why I'm doing all that, in case you were wondering, is because I do not want to work on that type of stuff yet. Uh, there are, I will be coming out with content in the near future that will cover the reasons why I will be needing those config commands later on. And those are specific to network security and network management. But for right now, I don't need those commands enabled or operational. So that's basically how this is going to work. So that's basically how you would effectively bootstrap a router, what I like to refer to as bootstrapping. One other thing that I wanna show you real quick is I actually don't want the, the name of R10. I'm gonna say host name is gonna be CSR10. So that changes the, the host name to something else. Now, if you notice here, this script right here, these top seven lines, this is a pretty good synopsis of what you need to be aware of. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, copy them down in the notepad, whatever the case might be, these are gonna be the things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to as you progress forward in your preparation for learning the Cisco iOS. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next video.